Oh my god! Oh wow! Oh okay. Oh my god! We're having a stream on a Tuesday for for the first time. I sound like I'm a little drunk. Sorry, I don't know why. I just realized my lips like. God, if you guys could have seen my mouth, you'd be like, "Yo, dude, what's good? You're why?" It's, like the way I was talking, probably looked like I had like numb lips or like a numb tongue, like you know, like. Novocaine, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> first time having a stream in a Tuesday! In a very, 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 very long time. But it is indeed Tuesday and we are indeed here finally. And we're back. This should be a scramble. Uh let me actually load the game real quick. Hee hee. Anyways, um, so where did we leave off? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Minorika died in an explosion in Shibuya. That was pretty bad. Uh, so, we're currently on the 3 to 4 uh, p.m. hour, and I'm going to take a different approach. Normally, I always start playing with the characters I like to see where their stories are at, so it always feels like the chapter ends with characters I don't like very much. So, we are indeed today going to, for this hour, we're going to start with all the characters I don't like. Did I, am I streaming? I am streaming, yeah. I didn't just hit record. That happens to me a lot. Sometimes I hit start recording instead of start streaming. And it's kind of awkward. I spend like maybe two minutes talking to myself and then I realize there's no stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we're going to start with the characters I don't like as much, so... We're gonna be playing Osawa and Minorikawa first, and we're gonna save like Kano Maria and Tama, uh, and not Tama, uh, Kano Maria and Achi for last. So let's just get into. It. Ooh, spooky! I I never really liked playing Osawa's chapters because they're always kind of creepy. Like I know we've talked, I know I've talked about this before, but like. It's really fascinating, right, how every character's story seems to have almost like a distinct genre to it as well. Like, Osawa definitely feels more like horror drama mystery, right? Um, and Tama's feels almost like whimsical, um, like whimsical cartoon, and right? And then Minorikawa's feels like fucking Ace Attorney mixed with a... A serial, like a maybe like one of those serial publications about a journalist. That's what his feels like. Also, like feels more whimsical and chill. And then Kano's feels like classic. Um, how do you say? Like uh, detective? What? Oh gosh, there's another word for it. I don't know, but classic, you know, like, detective corruption within the estate kind of, um, story, and then who else did we miss? Um... Oh, and Achi just feels like teen cartoon, you know? Like, I, every single story has such a distinct, unique feel to it. Um, distinct, unique genre kind of feel to it, but Osawa's, I never like it. It's too creepy. <sighs> we gotta play it anyway, so... I've never truly trusted anyone, not on a fundamental level. Human beings are a type of organism that I can get a true that I can't get a true handle on through mere surface interactions. And the very fact that I've never trusted anyone else means that inevitably no one has ever trusted me. Maybe the root of all my problems can be traced back to my heart. As he waited for Minorikawa to contact him, Osawa thought about his current crisis. 
Assuming Tanaka was behind the kidnapping, he must have he must have accomplices. And these criminals had mistakenly abducted Maria in their attempt to get at the antiviral drug that was in Hitomi's blood. Ma Maria and Hitomi were fraternal twins, but they looked similar enough to be mistaken for identical twins. Still, Tanaka would never confuse the two. The, mi the mix-up must have been made by some criminal who didn't know Maria or Hitomi personally. Interesting that Hitomi bring the that Hitomi bring the ransom to the. Oh, insisting. Not interesting. I was like that. This is not making sense. Is a sentence. Insisting that Hitomi bring the ransom to the train station was obviously their solution. It had set her up for a second abduction. But piecing together this much of the kidnappers' plan only raised a different question. Why had Tanaka shown him those emails from Hitomi? Wouldn't the criminals want to keep information like that hidden? The more Osawa thought about things, the less they made sense. Just who are my true allies and who are my foes? Mr. Osawa, a delivery has arrived for you. <sighs> it was Kajiwara at the study door. Come in. Kajiwara stepped into the room and handed Osawa a letter-sized envelope. Osawa checked the label. Coming. The official Ayakamiki fan club membership application enclosed. Bruh. Right, he had requested the application from the day he'd gotten back from overseas. Would you mind opening that? Kajiwara asked apologetically. What for? I'd just like to check the contents of any packages you've received today, sir. It's possible the kidnapper may try to make contact by mail. Osawa opened the envelope. Inside, he found the expected application, along with postcards featuring pictures of the singer. Kajiwara peered pointedly at the post pointedly at the postcard images. You must really like her, the detective said. And just what sort of music do you listen to then? Osawa asked, staring at one of the postcards. Dude, Osawa needs to take a chill pill. He takes everything so personally. Eesh. But you know what? That's also a big mood. I'm, I, I, I do the same. XD. Um, it was a striking photo that showed off Kamiki's expressive eyes. Let me think. Mostly classical, I suppose. Osawa raised a quizzical eyebrow. You know, like... You know, or... You know, like Mozart, Kajiwara continued. Or... Uh, stroke. You know, Kajiwara continued. Like Mozart. Uh, okay. And Chopin and the like. He hummed, a f he hummed a few bars. Can't say I've ever heard of them. Are you serious? Wait, actually, also is stupid as fuck. Kajiwara looked shocked. I'm familiar with the names, of course. I just never had much of an interest in music. Oh, okay, that's fair. Or like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what he said made more sense. You know, he knows them, but not gonna listen to their music, which is fine. Oh, that's such a shame. Give me one sec. I'm gonna put some socks on. Oh my gosh, my tailbone. I like bent over to, cause like my desk is kind of right next to um, my drawers, and the socks are at the bottom naturally. And I bent over and I felt my tailbone pop, and then I was ma I sounded like an old person being like Ugh, bending over to get my socks. My socks have corgi butts on them. Would you care to listen to a piece now? A, I suppose I may as well, uh, now that he brought it up. Osawa was curious to know what sort of music Kajiwara enjoyed. We'll be friendly. I suppose I may as well. Now that he brought it up, up Osawa was curious to know what sort of music Kajiwara enjoyed. The detective pulled the digital music player out of his pocket. Here you go. Osawa slept the ad attached earbuds into his ears. He heard a flow of uh, quiet strings that was soon joined by bold, dramatic horns. As the piece continued, it grew more and more profound and complex, and Osawa could feel his spirit calming. Ah. He took a deep breath and expelled it through his nostrils. It felt as if the toxic gloom that had filled him was departing with the air. Before he knew it, nearly ten minutes had passed. What do you think? It's quite nice. 
The theme of this piece is, uh... Cut you out of pause for a moment to think. Well, it's about how erudition can be boorishness. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, no, I just want to make sure there's no jump thing. Thank you. If I hadn't met you, I'd never have discovered this piece. He spoke the words unthinkingly with unaccustomed frankness. Was this the power of music, then? To make friends? I'm very happy to hear that, sir. I saw a gaze at one of the postcards as he let himself be drawn back into the music. Aya was scooping up handfuls of mystical blue sand. The grains dripped down from her fingertips. I feel like I could be in this photo here, Osawa muttered. Like I've lived my life letting so many things slip through my fingers. Unexpectedly wholesome? Kaji would have thought for a moment before responding. I think anyone who's worked hard to accomplish something and focus for so long for a long time on that one thing is susceptible to these kinds of feelings. Accomplishing something means getting results. That's why that's not where my problem is. I saw her move the headphones and gave back the music player. You told me not to hide things from you, right? Had you wanted nodded silently. Then allow me to speak frankly. Leaning back heavily in his chair, Osawa took another deep, slow breath. I'm anxious. So anxious that it's almost crushing. Almost crushing me. Given the circumstances, sir, that's completely understand- No. Osawa spoke up before Kajiwara could finish. It's not that. It's not that at all. He shook his head vigorously. If the worst should happen to my daughter, how am I going to feel, I wonder? I'm not a man with a wide range of emotions. My heart is always cold, somehow. And the truth is that I've always wanted- I've always wanted it to be that way, which is why if I do lose my- if I do lose my daughter, my heart might remain unmoved. I may not even be able to feel his father's sorrow. That's what I'm anxious about. He felt his emotions twist inside him in a way that was truly- that was utterly confusing. For perhaps the first time in his life, he realized how fickle a thing the human heart could be. It's all right, sir. Could you want to flash him a carefree smile? Well, it's all right. People who have really cold hearts don't worry about that sort of thing. The detective held out his music player again. Kajiwara's a homie! I like Kajiwara a lot. Here, I'd like you to have this. Please, give it another listen if you like. I think it might help you calm your nerves. Someone took the offered advice. Devi device. I can't read. He had dared to open up Kaji. He had dared to open up to Kajiwara just a little, and his own, and to his own surprise, he felt grateful for it. And how about one of the, these as well? A banana, brat. The detective produced a banana from his pocket. I'm fine, thanks. You sure? Guess I'll take it. Osawa spoke irritably, then his expression softened a little. Oh, they're becoming bros. You know, you've been getting on my nerves all day. Really? And here I thought I'd been doing what I could to soothe your spirits, Mr. Osawa. It's actually been a real long time since I've yelled at anyone quite so much. As the words left his lips, Osawa found himself thinking back to one particular rainy day. Today, his wife or something left him. Maria had been in fifth grade at the time. Osawa was standing in his daughter's room. In his hands, he held the letter she'd left behind. He happened to glance out the window and saw Maria walking along, soaked from head to toe. In an instant, Osawa was consumed with rage. Oh, Maria had left a note. Sorry, I was <laughs> reading the note first, Dad. You only pay attention to Hitomi. You're so busy. 
You're too busy with work to play with me, so I'm running away from home. Struck by the impulse, he didn't quite understand. He ran from the room, heading for the front door. Maria had just gotten back inside. I saw him at her silently in the entranceway. Entryway. Wet strands of hair clung to the girl's forehead as she looked up at her father with a bitter glare. You don't care what happens to me, do you? Did he slap her? Impulsively, he slapped her face. Maria's cheeks turned red and tears welled up in her eyes. He saw his anger transform abruptly into guilt. He gazed out at the palm of hand and saw a tiny spot of blood. He was shocked by the recognition of what he'd just done, and then, he was afraid. Afraid that his daughter could bring such raw emotion out of him and make him do something so thoughtless. Something wrong, Mr. Ozawa. Kajiwara was leaning in, looking concerned. Osawa came back into the moment with a start and realized he had buried his face in his hands. No, he muttered, looking up. I'm just getting angry, yelling at people. I'm not good with that sort of thing. I don't like it. He picked up the music player and fidgeted with the earbuds as he spoke. Well, getting angry and yelling at people, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's just human. It's human? To do those kinds of things? I often said that he was cold and mechanical. Her sarcasm only underlined a fact he'd always lived with. That he didn't know how to conduct himself like a human being. He's a robot! I mean, he is a... Admittedly, he a little bit of a dick. He a little eccentric. He a little odd, but you know. If you get angry, you show it, Kajiwara said. If you get sad, you show it. It's human nature to let other people know how we're feeling after all. Yo, I like Kajiwara. He's like the old. He's like one of the smarter characters. Old. And more, what do you call it? Like, well-rounded. But what if doing that hurts other the other person? That's when you apologize, sir. Ah. It occurred to us all that he'd never tried to tell anyone how he felt before. He'd never felt the need to. And yet, right now, he suddenly felt that if his daughters were to appear before him, he might blurt out everything he'd ever left unsaid. It was a terrifying thought. Darling. I opened the door and stepped into the room. The detectives are asking for you. It seems there's been a development. We'll be right there. Osawa and Kajiwara hurried out of the room. Holy shit, the keep out fucking jump scared me. Poor Osawa. We're getting to see Osawa's soft side now. Okay, so we have a keep out on Osawa. What the heck? What? Wait, why was there such a big time block in Osawa's story that's missing? It's 30 minutes. Okay, no, this is correct. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, well, I guess we just have to keep playing other people's stories, so let's, let's go on with Maria's. Let's see where Maria's is at right now.
Wait, hold on. Is my name Hitomi Osawa? At my shout, the man with the cane hesitates the finger on his trigger. His finger on the trigger. What do you mean by that? The barrel of the gun is still aimed squarely at my head. I mean exactly what I said. Is my name Hitomi Osawa? I don't know who I am. You're trying to play games with me. I'm not playing with anyone, I swear. I'm utterly desperate now. Oh, she doesn't say that out loud. I'm utterly desperate now. Getting killed is the one is one thing, but who wants to die without even knowing who they are? Tell me, am I Hitomi Osawa or not? The man gives me a good hard look. Damn it, I wonder. He continues to study me along the barrel of the gun. Tell me what you know. It's an order, not a request. What I know about what? Look, I have amnesia. I quickly summarize what's happened to me since I woke up in that storehouse. The man listens intently, never taking his eyes off me. I see, so that's what's going on then. Once I'm done with my story, the man with the cane sits down on an empty soda crate. Seems he believes me at any rate. That's a relief, if nothing else. So then, am I Hitomi Osawa? No. Sorry, I'm just gonna close the curtains because it's getting a little dark outside. Then who is Hitomi Osawa? Is she someone who looks like me? Shut your mouth, the man spits. Just be quiet. Beat him up, Maria. Oh. His expression is vacant. What am I going to do? He mutters to himself. Um, if I'm not Hitomi Osawa, does that mean you have any business with me? You don't have any business with me? Seems so. In that case, can I go? The assassin doesn't answer. He lets his pistol hang limp in his hand, the muzzle dropping down, dropping to point at the ground. It doesn't look like he wants to kill me anymore, but it doesn't look like he'll just let me go quietly either. I remain motionless, waiting for an opportunity to, waiting for an opportunity to run away. I need to do something about that gun he has and then make a run for it. Never try and grab the gun, that's dangerous. I remain motionless, waiting for an opportunity to run away. I might not make it in time, the man mutters to himself, murmurs to himself under his breath. Not make it in time for what? I'm curious now, but this is hardly the time or place to try and find out more. Fist! Hi, Lifeless, how's it going? How has it been? Uh, I've learned for certain that I'm not Hitomi Osawa. Well, it's just as important to know who you're not as to know who you are, right? So. Also. Cool. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm like, che I'm checking my shirt right now in the mirror because, uh, I guess I might have gotten some, like, I don't know, I I didn't even eat anything greasy, but like, for dinner, but I, but like, there was like a dark spot on my shirt, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, like a brown stain or red stain, it wasn't like ketchup or sauce or anything, but it was literally just like a darkened patch, so it makes me think I got, I like, dripped oil on my shirt or something, but again, I didn't eat anything oily for dinner, but I used a stain removing pen at it earlier, and now that the, the... The detergent has dried. I'm just making sure the stain is gone, and we're chilling because this is like a, it's like a cream white colored shirt. So if if I get like a if a dark spot is barely visible, hee <laughs> hee. Uh, but life high risk. It was yum, yum. What did you eat again? I don't remember if I asked you earlier. I'm not Santa Claus. I don't know. I've never seen you and Santa in the same room. So, bus. <laughs> Hi, Immortal Cone. How's it going? How you doing? <laughs> What's good on this beautiful Tuesday? Very hot. Well, I don't know. Um, but I think you and I live pretty close geographically, so I don't know if it was like really hot for you today as well. It was so fucking hot in New York. It hit almost 100 today. But then tomorrow, it's going to be back down in the 60s and low 70s. Whack, right? Like, right now, outside is 28 degrees Celsius. And then by tomorrow, 8 a.m., it's going to be 18 degrees. It's going to drop 10 fucking degrees, and then the peak tomorrow is going to be 20 degrees. So, kind of whack, but... <sighs> you know, New England... Not, well, New York's not part of New England, but, you know, weather in the American Northeast be like this during this uh, part of the year. Uh... 
I was dying and I work a warehouse job. Oh, that's brutal, yeah. And I'm like, I feel like it's a coin flip if the place you work has AC. They probably just have fan, big industrial fans blowing hot air, yeah. So that should tell you how hot it was, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you got water breaks, though. But... I guess, on the bright side for your sake, or on, on the bright side, uh, it will be cooler tomorrow, so... Got that going for us. Yeah, just fans. That's, yeah, no, that's no bueno. So hopefully they ha uh, they provided water or something, because again, today was so brutally hot. Apparently, actually, um, I know, I saw on the news that in Newark, the airport, like Newark Airport, they registered today as the hottest uh, day, right? Uh, like, hottest May 31st since, like, 1980-something. And I'm like, bruh, that is a real bruh moment there. That's not okay, but... Climate change! Woo! Woo! Anyways. <laughs> uh, what was I reading? Oh, I've learned for certain that I'm not Hitomi Osawa, which basically tells me nothing. I'm right back to square one of figuring out who I am. The assassin has gone quiet, sitting on a pile of crates. He seems lost in thought. Still, I don't dare to try and get away. All I can do is stand and wait and mull over my own situation. Just who am I? Who am I? I ask myself again and again. I am. I am. Sam, I am! No, I have no business with you. The man finally says. Go. Don't worry. I won't follow you. I wonder if I can believe him. Maybe he's just trying to get me off my guard so he can shoot me in the back. Do not go to the police or go back home, he continues. Lay low by yourself somewhere for a while. How long is a while? Until around sundown. This should be all over by then. It'll be all over? I have no idea what it is, but decide not to pry in case he decides to change his mind. Maria's smart. Okay, I'm going to run away now. Sure. I take a slow step backward. I start- I'm starting to turn away when he speaks up again. Before you go, I need you to tell me one more thing. What's that? When you get your memories back, I'm sure you're going to hate me, and so I apologize in advance. Of course I have no idea what he's talking about, but it makes me even more uneasy. I truly am sorry. I've got no response for that, so I just give it to the man one last look before I turn and run. He knows, obviously, that, like, she's one of the twins. A goofy goober! That's me, goober. I decide to look for some place to hide out for a while, as the gunman suggested. But since I don't really know my uh, my left from my right in this town, that's easier said than done. Before I realized it, I made my way, I made my way back to the knick knack shop where I bought the necklace. Knick knock. Maybe I could hide out in here. As I contemplate the possibility, I hear an all too familiar voice. Tama 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 tama. Oh gosh. There's Mr. Yanagista on the floor of the shop. He's been tied up with some rope. What happened, boss? Look, this is all just... Uh, I was framed. Nah, whatever's happened. I'm pretty sure it was his fault. Just call it a hunch. He says I'm a thief. Well, I say he's the thief for selling stuff he finds around town. Hey, the sales clerk steps into view, scowling. Just what are you implying? What in the world is going on in here? I haven't the foggiest. Tama, help me, please! Yanagista kicks and squirms like a hyperactive child. Do you know this man? The sales clerk asks. No, well, I mean, sorta. 
he's a real pain. He's been making a scene like this for as long as he's been here. I find it hard to imagine a worse way to interfere with someone's business. I hate to ask, the clerk continues, but could you take him to the police for me? The police? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, the police. The gunman did specifically warn me not to go to them. So a dude with a gun tells you not to go to the police and you're just like, yeah, no, that sounds about right. I'll trust that, XD. I feel no loyalty to that killer, but I'm reluctant to antagonize him. Okay, that's fair. And for reasons I can't explain, I have a strong sense that going to the police right now is a bad move. But Mr. Yanagishita isn't privy to my thoughts, and he looks up at me with a hopeful gleam in his eye. Yeah, 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 that'll work. Tama, take me to the police. <laughs> and then we can put this all behind us. All's well that ends well, right? Uh... Well... Sure. Feeling like I have no choice, I leave the shop with him. Okay, Mr. Yanagishita says excitedly as soon as we're out of, the, out of earshot. Now let's go find Chidi. Huh? Aren't we going to the pol What now? We're not really gonna go. Oh man, I am so glad you showed up, Tama. Now come on, let's go find Chidi. From the big grin on his face, I have an inkling of what's coming next. You've thought of another get-rich-quick scheme, haven't you? Goodness, Tama, you can see right through me. Uh, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. It's practically written all over your face, boss. But Mr. Yanagishita isn't really listening. He's too full of enthusiasm. This time I got a line on 10 million yen. Come on, let's go make ourselves stinking rich. He punctuates his grand announcement by pointing fervently at some non-existent listener. XD. <laughs> Several weeks later, what? Iron stomach, a celebration of truly astonishing appetites. When the mighty stomach triumphs over the oh I'm too slow to read it. I stand with Chidi on the winner's podium, but cheers and applause of deafening are deafening when the master ceremonies make the announcement. Chidi is the champion. She laughs at delight she holds up the trophy that signifies her ten million year win. And me, I got runner up. I wasn't too into the idea at first, but I found it. Uh, giving a shot, I, but after giving a shot, I found the professional gluttony kind of grows on you. Even I was surprised by how much I could eat. I had to admit, it felt kind of good. My memory still doesn't come back yet, but that doesn't matter anymore. I found myself a new purpose. What the fuck? To steal a cheaty spot on the throne. That right there is now my greatest goal in life. How the fuck did we get this bad ending? <laughs> How the fuck did we get here? Tama never got her memories back. She ended up starting a new life and confided to her again. Which may not be a horrible fate, but wouldn't it be better if she recovered her old life in Maria when she was cornered in the alley by the man with the cane? There's someone who could have turned up to help her out, Yanagishita. But he can't do that if he ends up getting tied up at the knickknack shop. Okay. So, I think it's probably a really cool story. Um, well, that's not what I actually wanted to do. Oh. Oh, okay. It did actually correct his bad ending. So we're here now. You're the idiot buster. You know what call smack Yanagista right now. Oh, wait. Um, so we need to, we need to lose him, I think. I think we actually might need to let him go, basically. Probably he was headed to Endo Electronics, eating champs. <laughs> TK. It was the only local place he could think of that might buy a second-hand computer. Damn, the guy had led him on a wild goose chase. Minoriko started running toward Dokanzaka. I just want to check the timeline real quick. 
Oh no, Maria's bad ending is still there. Oh. Hmm? As he approaches Karamo outside the station, he caught sight of a skinny figure disappearing into a throng along Sender Guy. A suit with deep bluish stripes. There's the only one man he knew dressed like that. But why was he heading down Sender Guy and not towards Dolgenzaka? Oh, now he remembered. Fuck! Okay, um. Although we do need to run into Miki, if I'm if I recall correctly. We need her for something as well. Um, there's a second hit dick dack shop. Okay, okay. Where near where the burning hammer demo had been held. He recalled seeing a poster out front that read we buy computers at top prices. That had to be it. That's where Yanagisto was planning on selling his laptop. Changing directions. There you are, Yanagista. Unicall you know, burst into the shop on center guy, accuse an accusing finger pointed squarely at the thief. Listen, there's no way I'm buying. I still don't. Okay. Let's. So let's pick the sales demo venue. Probably he was headed to the sales demo venue. Maybe he was planning to find some more customers to auction the laptop off laptop off of them. Damn, the guy had led him on a wild goose chase. Minoka ran along center guy towards the Nokane sales building. Nokane building where the sales demo had been held before. Before he got there, however, a glance to one side stopped him in his tracks. Aha! He chirped. He'd stopped out of the knickknack shop where he ran into Miku about two earlier, towers earlier. Ah, so we still end up here no matter what. You're the idiot, Buster. Immunity call was smacked down against right across the face. Ouch! Hitting him felt good. He decided to do it again. He drew back his arm to deliver another blow. But then someone else came into the shop. Yanagishita's eyes lit up as soon as he saw who it was. Oh my angel, whatever it is my darling Miku doing here? Miku stood in the doorway on the verge of tears. Mr. Minorikawa, she began, then her voice choked up. Miku? What's the matter? Something wrong? I... Miku drew in close to Minorikawa's side. Huh? Yanagishita's gaze darted back and forth between Miku and Minorikawa. You two know each other? Sort of. More to the point, is she the girl you said you were in love with? That's right, the one and only Miku. I have her entrance music set as my ringtone. Paying no heed to Yanagishita's excitement, Miku kept her eyes fixed on Minorikawa. Ugh. I lost to a girl who knows Aiki Jujutsu. Lost! I lost! She buried her face in Minorikawa's chest. Ah. Yanagishita let out a gasp. What's this about? What is what in the what is this all about? Mr. Minonikawa, I need to learn like Aiki I I lost stroke. Aiki Jujutsu. I feel so so ashamed. He, she buried her face even deeper into Minonikawa's chest. That's 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 so unfair! <laughs> With tears in his eyes, Yanagishita darted out the door. Oh my god. <laughs> The Nodikawa glared after the pathetic fellow as he scampered off. The guy sure knows how to take advantage of a bad situation. So, oh. Sorry, I'll give him that, he murmured. Hey, can't let him get away. I'm just gonna catch him and hand him over, please. Anyhow, I'm just glad I got my partner back. This one, because then we have to let we have to let Yanagishita go. Anyhow, I'm just, I'm just glad I got my partner back. Ordinarily, he'd be inclined to propose or pursue Yanagishita and subject him to a tirade, at the very least. But there's no time for that now. He explained the situation to the shopkeeper, who flashed a sympathetic smile. Uh, is that so? Lucky for you, he screwed up then. Much as I am happy to do business, I just can't buy a computer that doesn't come with its accessories. So you'd have bought it from him if you'd had the accessories? Of course. Stolen or not, it's all the same once I've sold it. The shop shopkeeper chuckled unapologetically. Hey. 
Listen, Yanagishi Tagawa, he was deserved in that situation. I don't feel bad for this guy. <laughs> I suppose that's true. You don't even laugh with him. Along with him. Yeah, all the same. I'm gonna punch him. Like, how that nice, he roared. The shopkeeper froze like a startled rabbit. I bet everything you have for sale here has been stolen, hasn't it? D -d Don't be ridiculous. I'll warn you up front. There's no use hiding things from me. I've interviewed you after all. I know you. The shopkeeper is getting more and more flustered. Well, I mean, look, this is just between you and me, okay? Sometimes I go around gathering stuff that people have lost and I sell it here. But it's not stolen, just repurposed. There's nothing wrong with that, right? The shopkeeper smiled ingratiatingly. You moron! Minorikawa struck, stuck his finger in the man's face. Selling lost property is a serious crime, too. Okay, now I have a little more uh, respect for Minorikawa here. It, it is? Well, I mean, I guess I sort of figured it might be sometimes. Well, I'm not the police. I'm more into curiosity than legality. In fact, I find this all pretty fascinating. I mean, what sort of things have you gathered for sale? Bruh. The M word. Moron is such a good insult, too, honestly. Like, mo like you moron, you dingbat. Like, those, those just, like, somehow are, like, actually... Like, good insults, IMO. They're devastating. <laughs> Dingbat. <laughs> Come on, Dingbat's a good one, too. Well, not the, uh, what sort of things have you gathered up for sale? <sighs> well, let me see. Like, this and that, and that and that. And the man pointed to various items on the shelves. Also this, and that and that, and that and that, I guess? You know, because eyes were directed all over the shop. My innocent ears. Avert your ears! Or... <laughs> I, uh, everything the shopkeeper pointed out had a hefty price tag. And you're actually able to sell things like this? Sure, I can sell stuff. Earlier today, someone bought a big necklace. But I discounted down to 30000 And you can still make a profit even offering discounts? Sure, I mean, it was just something I found lying on the ground after all. Minonoko looked back at him and for a moment laughed as well. Then his face turned hard. This is no laughing matter, he bellowed. You need to stop what you're doing here right away. Otherwise, you're going to find out what it's just like to be punished by my pen of justice. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. The shopkeeper bowed repeatedly. Mirako glared. The truth was that nah, was that right now he was so busy that he'd have to let this guy slide. Still, this whole asinine affair had eaten up a big chunk of his time he didn't have to waste. He was going to have to finish up his copy back at the editing office. Laptop in hand, he left the shop, only to stop short when a slight figure stepped out in front of him. Mr. Minorikawa! Miku stood there, barring his path. Please introduce me to a dojo where I can learn Aikijujutsu. I'm sorry, I really don't have the time for this right now. Minorikawa tried to hurry on forward, but she stubbornly refused to let him pass. You remember that the other dojo before? You introduced me to that other dojo before, remember? I suppose so, now that you mention it. He tried to slip by her on right on her right hand side, but she was too quick to block him. You're the one who introduced me to the world of martial arts, Mr. Minorikawa. Well, yes. You know you're putting me in a bit of a bind here. Trying to slip by on her left... An, a turn to slip by on her left was a no-go to. She could anticipate his every move. Please just hear me out. She was speaking through quiet sobs now. I can't stand to leave things like this. She looked Minorikawa right in the eye. Sorry, you just have to persevere until you're able to win again. This is a good opportunity for you. You can find something to do with yourself. 
that isn't martial arts. So I'm sorry, but you, I really don't have the time to have this discussion right now. Oh, shoot. I mean, we need her to pull him away from Shibuya. He needs to go somewhere with her so that he doesn't get caught in the explosion. It's anything but C, I think. This is a good opportunity for you. There's a nickname for his... That's a nickname for his peen, for sure. The Pen of Justice. <laughs> this is a good opportunity for you. You can find something to do with yourself that isn't martial arts. What? You were the champion of that one pub, right? Maybe now that you're done with that, you should find a more girlish line of work. I'm about to punch this motherfucker. Mi Miku began to tremble. Smack. You jerk! Miku delivered a blindingly fast slap to Minorikawa's cheek. Why do you have to put it like that? You're so mean! Bursting into tears, Miku ran off. Hey, Miku! She gave no sign she'd heard him and didn't turn around. Minorikawa rubbed, Minorikawa rubbed his cheek. It stung. For once, he'd actually regretted what he said. Yeah, he better. Maybe he shouldn't have given. Maybe he shouldn't have assumed she'd be willing to just give up her hobby. He did, in fact, know of several Aiki Jujutsu dojos. If only he'd had the time, he could have introduced her to one easily enough. He checking his watch. He saw that he only had thirty minutes and change until four o'clock. There was no more wiggle room at this point. All these articles need to get written and fast. He needed to get back to the editing department, and yet, oh damn it to hell! I can't get work done like this. Miyurikawa broke into a run. He didn't run for Heaven Publish Heaven Publishing. Instead, he went after Miku. Okay, good. So he's probably safe now. Okay, it's not a bad ending, at least. Let's see. Fuck. We have a lot of breakouts. We have a lot of keepouts we have to break. Actually, literally every character right now has a keepout that we have to break. Except Maria, interesting. This hasn't had gone quiet. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, because right, right, right. Now y Yanagista shows up. It helps her, right? The assassin has gone quiet. We've already read this. Who am I? <gasps> Yo, where the fuck did I put my watch? Oh, there it is. Tama! Tama! Tama? Tama Hitomi? None of the above. It doesn't really matter. I think it's just, um, what's her face calling, uh, screaming her name. Wow, so smart. I am very smart. Tama? I turn at the sound of an exuberant voice and see Mr. Yanagishita running my way, flailing his arm in a friendly greeting. I swear this guy could wind up banished to the pits of hell and he'd still give it his all day in and day out. Oh, thank goodness. It is you, Tama. I knew it. Big hat to, big smart to. <laughs> Yorick's hat. XD. Thank goodness it is you, Tama. I knew it! The man with the cane grumbles something incoherent, then holsters his gun and flees the scene. Huh. Now you're with some middle-aged guy? You look so sweet and innocent, but I guess you kind of get around, huh? Shut the fuck up. I would have slapped him. Boss! Nice timing. I do a little fist bump. Whatever he's doing here, I'm glad he. Uh, whatever he's doing here, I'm glad you drove off that guy with the gun. Hmm. What are you? Uh, what are you so happy about? Yanagisa gave me a puzzled look, but he's promptly distracted by his own excitement. He shifts down to a conspiratorial whisper. You know, I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I was in such a tizzy over some silly scratch card from a magazine. I can tell he has news he's itching to tell me. 
Did something happen? Well... <laughs> he brings a hand to his mouth and giggles unsettlingly. I had a great idea. Great little idea. A great way to strike it rich. I feel like I've heard this from you before. Uh, Mr. Yanagish thus shakes his head fervently. This time, it's different. Now try not to be too surprised. Or, we're talking way more digits than before. Now try not to be too surprised, yeah? Spittle flies from his mouth as he rattles on. Or, uh, it's okay to be surprised, actually. In fact, I'm guessing you're definitely gonna be amazed this time, Pema. I can practically see the banknotes dancing in his eyes. Cut to the chase already. What is it you want to tell me? This time, get this, I got a line on 10 million yen. He thrusts his index finger forward skyward, grinning ear to ear. Surprise now? Yeah, you are. Or yeah, you are. And it doesn't require any capital. It's no risk, high return. There's a crazy gleam in his eye. Oh man, I'm finally gonna get to be part of a million a billionaires club. This is so ridiculous, I don't even have a snack and retort for it. Sup? Hello, little cherry, how are you doing today? Happy Tuesday? Hope you're having a lovely day. It's been a while. I hope you've been well lately. Welcome to Shibuya Scramble. Uh, a mystery, uh, a text adventure, mystery adventure game. There we go. I had a short time to say that. Sorry about that, but. Choo choo, choo choo, choo choo. I was like, I heard that very quietly, and I realized there's also like a very quiet background music here. Um. Or I had my headphones set very low, so I couldn't hear the background music. It was very quiet. Uh, never mind that 10 million obviously wouldn't. Never mind that 10 million obviously wouldn't make him a billionaire. By the way, you haven't seen Chidi, have you? We're gonna need your help to wrap up this 10 million. Yen. Chidi? No, I haven't run into her since the sales demo. Oh darn. Well, if you do happen to see her, tell her to get in touch with me. Good. I'm fine. Glad to hear it. Wow. Uh, a little part of my soul leaves my body every single time I meow that's in. I, yep, nope. I just have a very, I only have like 1%. I lose 1% of my soul every time I do it. So that means every time I do it, I do lose less and less and less. You know, it's like, um, there is like, you know, I'll never have 0% of my soul, but, you know, 1% of my total soul. Not, yeah. <laughs> I have been busy. It'd be like that. Hopefully, I mean, it is summertime coming up though, so hopefully you'll be a little less busy soon. Get some time to yourself, relax a bit. Hydrate or dehydrate? Slurpy, slurpy. No one is forcing you to meow, but I'm a masochist. I like feeling my soul that What? Er. <laughs> Moderately cursed, but you know, it's like. I can't just say meow. That's, uh... You know, just just very for just forwardly being like, Oh, hi, Gutsun. Oh, meow. That's a funny thing to say. That's lame. I gotta make it cursed. But it's basically tradition. It's, a, it's gonna be an age-old, passed-down family tradition. My grandkids, grandkids, grandkids are gonna be saying meow. In the in, in cursed ways. <sighs> Sorry, big yawn. Jesus Christ, I need to go to bed earlier today. I've been sleeping really poorly every day recently. Have you heard of Pilk? P I L K? No, I'm just gonna Google that real quick. Am I gonna get some not safe for work shit? Pepsi milk. Oh, 
I don't like this. The drink, yeah. No, I don't like this. <laughs> Why do you ask about this, Gutson? Please don't tell me that you had some pilk today. I mean, who knows? Maybe it is good, but it kind of does seem like one of those things that's not. I'm so perplexed. I'm like, Ellen of on my third glass. Ooh, and how's your stomach? I still don't know what he's going on about, but there's probably no harm in being helpful. Thank you, Tama. Guess I may as well give you a little hint. A hint? Yeah, a hint. Want to hear it? No, not particularly. Oh, okay, well anyway, thanks for helping me out with that chitty thing. Adios! JK, I've never had it. I just think it's funny, but I imagine my stomach would be destroyed. I know, right? Like, it'd be so funny because you'd be drinking, like, carbonation, but then, like, milk is the opposite of carbonation. It's like, it's like, it's non-bubbly. It's It coats your stomach, but... Yeah, no, I don't know. Again, I feel like that is a stomach ache waiting to happen. You are gonna be having some mad, possibly diarrhea. <laughs> I was about to say some mad flaming shits, but I'm like, no, no, it just to be up to just up front might be diarrhea. <laughs> uh, and then like a whirlwind, Mr. Ganagishita zooms away, leaving me alone in the alley. Whew. Suddenly, I feel totally exhausted. I let out a sigh and drop my eyes. That's when I notice a notebook on the ground at my feet. Did the assassin drop this? I pick it up and look inside. There's a photograph tucked inside the back cover. Is that one of the twins? It shows three young people, two boys and a girl. Is one of them Tanaka? Yeah, the one in the back looks like Tanaka. The one in the center looks like the killer. The guy with the gun. Well, what do I do now? Do I go to the police? How would I even explain the situation? Oh, well, I can see it now. There's this killer out there, and he's after this person named Hitomi Osawa. And then the police would be like, Who is that? And who exactly is after her? And then I would say, and then what would I say? Uh, heck, they might not even give me the time of day to li um, in the first place. Not only do I have not have any idea who Hitomi Osawa is, I know nothing about the guy who's after her, except that he walks with a cane. I feel like his I feel like um, his beef has something to do with how he got needed the cane, you know? I mean, I can't even tell him who, tell them who I am. They'd probably shoo me away without a second thought. This is true, you know, when you report something, they're gonna take your name and ID and shit too. What am I supposed to do? I hang my head at a total loss. The necklace around my neck sways idly to and fro. <laughs> Officer, arrest every cripple in the city. Oh my god, just imagine. That would be so terrible. They'd have some serious lawsuits go on. Okay, let's see where we're at now. So we're gonna keep out that Maria. Yeah, why does Osawa just have a really weird time block here that's just missing? Well, let's play some Cunnel then. practically dived the car, dived from the car when it arrived on the scene in Maru, Maruyama, uh, Maruyama Cho stroke. The place was teeming with officers and onlookers alike. Out of the way, please move, please move aside! Kano forced his way through the throng. Sasiyama was lying in a massive pool of blood. 
Oh, Sazayama! I liked him! Kind of rushed to his partner's side. Honestly, you know what my biggest fear is? Like, I'm not... I mean, of course I don't want someone to shoot me ever. But I'm more terrified of being stabbed than, like, being shot. Like... I don't know, it's just like... I feel like being stabbed would be more painful than being shot. I don't actually know. I've never been stabbed nor have I been shot, but like, I don't know. If you guys are paranoid like me, do you ever just like, are you ever just like on the subway like late at night by yourself and you're just like, oh my god, that dude looks kind of sus. What if he just like stabs me? Man, that would like really hurt. Like, you guys think of that? Does that happen to you guys too? Where you just have like really freakishly morbid thoughts and because you're just paranoid? Yeah. No? Just me? I think I should seek a therapist. Uh, Kano rushed to his partner's side. The knife was still embedded deep in Sasayama's belly. Its handle shuddered each time he drew a labored breath. Guess I messed up. Sasayama could only ra manage a raspy murmur. Yo, you, you gotta stab them back. But I don't have a knife, and I'm not metal enough to yank the knife that they used to stab me out and stab them. Thinking, Nug, I'm paranoid. Yeah, I think getting shot would hurt more. Huh. I don't know, because, like, I feel like a bullet enters you faster than a knife, right? So, like, I feel like if I were to get stabbed with a knife, I would feel the knife, like excruciatingly cutting through my flesh for, you know, like, a second or two. But a bullet would be, it would, would, would like, pierce and go into my skin in, in under, a, well under a second, right? I don't actually know. You know what? Let's, let's not conduct an experiment on this. Let's really not do that. Please don't try to talk, Connell Urge. It looks like... Looks like I won't be celebrating the missus's birthday. Sasayama drew a small package from his pocket. It was his wife's birthday soon. It had been neatly wrapped and fitted with a pretty little ribbon. Here, give this to me, chan for me. Kano shook his head. No way, you can give it to her yourself. <laughs> You've never met me, chan huh? She's real pretty. Probably surprised by how pretty I know. You told me all about her. Kano, please. Give this to my wife for me. Mustering the last of his strength, Sasayama pressed the gift into Kano's hand. Sasayama? <laughs> you stab her, I'll shoot. It probably depends on where you get shot or stabbed, the size of the bullet and the length of the blade and how far it goes inside your body. I think for sure, yeah. Because I'll be honest, I think, well, like, obviously I think, you know, getting stabbed in your stomach or shot in your stomach is going to hurt equally. Very fleshy, but, like, I feel like getting stabbed on your arm, like your forearm, would hurt really badly. But then getting a bullet there might not hurt as much. I don't know, though. Hi! <laughs> Spacebook, I'm so sorry. You're here just in time for a very morbid conversation. We're talking about if uh, it would hurt more if you get stabbed or shot. <laughs> but anyways, how you doing? <laughs> how have, I'm pretty, I think, I feel like it's about now that uh, you should have had your auditions. How did they go? Because, you know, it was a month-ish ago that you said they're coming up in a month. E stabbed. I agree. Like, I feel like, because, like, again, if you get shot with a bullet, I think a bullet just pierces through your flesh and, like, goes into your body faster than a knife does. And it's not to say that, like, someone will slowly stab you over the course of ten seconds. They might. But, like, a bullet wound, no matter what, a bullet, no matter what, enters your body in less than a second. But a knife wound is probably one or two seconds. That's just my logic. 
but yeah, you know, a bullet straight to your stomach or a knife straight to your stomach, both are gonna hurt like bitches because very fleshy and doing well. In fact, oh, you had the additions today. How did they go? I'm clapping in the back. Hopefully, it's not too loud. I'm trying to not like deafen everyone, but trying to clap and say, at least you got them done. Otsukare sama. <laughs> Also, oh, we got some bloody ass Sasuyama hands. Sasuyama's hand dropped back down into the puddle of blood. A paramedic team finally arrived at the scene. Okay, I just wanted to get his bloody hand off the screen. There's been one like little fruit fly flying around my room that's been bothering me the whole day. Or for several days. I don't think it's the same fruit fly though. Do fruit flies live that long? Um. Oh, I got you now, you son of a bitch. You shouldn't have landed on that pole. Ow! Oh. And I missed it. It landed on my lamp. And so I tried to like clasp my hands around it like I'm strangling. The, the lamp pole and a mist. This is fine. This is fine. This is why I enjoy having spiders in my room because the spiders will make webs that catch these little fuckers and the spiders will eat them. Went quite well. Unfortunately, my director is only offering one drum major instead of two, so my chances are cut in half. Really? Or does your director normally offer two? Find out Friday. Ooh, that's pretty. That is a really fast, like, audition turnaround. I hope you get it, though. I know you're gonna get it. The blood looked like jelly. Yeah, but it still looked kind of gross. Fruit fly? More like fruit dye. Honestly, like, I would personally say my least favorite, like, common insect, of course. Like, I'm not gonna be like, yo, I love scorpions. But, like, my least favorite common insect, so meaning, you know, like, ants. House spiders, flies, bees, mosquitoes. Like, I fucking despise flies. They're, like, they're the worst. Oh my god. Like, flies and gnats. Like, oh, spiders, ants, bees. Like, they don't bother me at all. But flies, oh, like the big ones that buzz around. So freaking annoying. They're, like, gross, and they buzz, and then fruit flies are just tiny, and they're so hard to kill and catch, because, ugh! Like I said, I like spiders, because, you know, if I see a spider in my room, I'm gonna, if I see a spider on my floor, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna put it on the ceiling, because that bitch gonna make a web, okay? And that web is gonna catch all the annoying bugs, and then this spider gonna be eaten well, okay? Listen. It's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. He gets to eat, or he or she gets to eat, and I get to live without the bugs I don't like. Spiders are awesome. Other str another streamer is confused as to why I leave spiders in my room, but they're so chill, I don't mind. Yeah, like, obviously, so, like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, like, ever seen, th there's, like, another type of spider, I don't know what they're called, but they're, like, usually small, they're, like, very, very small, they're black, and they're very jumpy. Those spiders freak me out a little, mostly because they can fucking, like, Superman jump from wall to wall, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so those ones I tend to yeet outside if I find them, but house spiders, you know, like, the little ones that are, like, like a, like a light caramel color? Like, those motherfuckers, they're so chill. They're so chill, literally. But it's like, you see one on the floor? Just put it on the ceiling or put it on a wall and it'll find its way up there. It's fine. Like, they're, they're being chillin', okay? Again, they're just trying to make a web. They're trying to find a home. They're trying to find a place to live. And they're just like the rest of us. They're trying to eat, okay? Trying to eat. The streamer told me and another user to clean our rooms, jokingly I assume, but they really did not like spiders. Again, to be fair, I think, you know, if I lived in Australia and I saw Australian spiders, I would not like those motherfuckers. But I live in the American Northeast where, for the most part, we only have, like, all of our spiders are pretty small. They are smaller than, like, a thumbnail, basically. 
And like, we have daddy long legs too, but also it's not like they're big, black, hairy spiders and like poisonous or venomous. They're just like house spiders. They're chilling, you know, it's whatever. We live in peace. And again, they make webs that eat all the gross bugs, so... Or the bugs that are just not helpful to the environment. I forget if it was flies or mosquitoes. I think it might have been flies. That's like, um, what is it? Like, they say if flies were instantly just to go extinct, like, literally, the, like, nothing would change in the ecosystem, which means that they are totally useless to Mother Nature. <laughs> From an evolutionary standpoint, they are completely useless and have a useless existence. Spiders have a very useful existence. XD. Oh, I didn't read that last dialogue. <laughs> Too busy popping off about spiders. Uh, Sasayama was loaded into the ambulance, kind of felt a surge of rage roiling inside of him. Clenching his fist so hard his nails dug into his palm, he marched over to the captive, to the ca uh, captive Alcada one. You son of a bitch! Oh no! He's... Oh, he wound up for a punch at Al Karawan's face, only to have his arm caught forcibly by the elbow. Spinning his head around, he found Stanley standing there. Let go of me, Stanley. But the American held a, had a grip of steel, and Kano's arm wouldn't budge. They allow you to assault suspects here in Japan, do they? Kano bit his lip, then lowered his shaking fist. No, of course not, he growled. Alcarawan let out a nasal chuckle as he watched the pair. With a cold glare, Stanley strolled over to him. He leaned close to whisper something, and all at once the blood drained from Alcarawan's face. Visibly shaken, shaken, Alcarawan said something back to Stanley. Stanley gave a slight nod, then left the captive with the police escort. I forgot to tell you, you got a sick Yu-Gi-Oh card that you might like. It's called Penguin Sword. Look it up when you get the chance. Oh, looking it up right now. I'm my way, boss. It's literally a penguin with a sword. I love it. Oh. Oh, and in the anime, they got sick eyebrows. They're like the fucking Lovelace type penguin. The Hopper penguin from... Right, Lovelace from Happy Feet. <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah, America! Whoa! There's also one called Penguin Soldier. Oh, this one's cute. He got shoulder pads. But yeah, that is very cool. I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh, but knowing the existence of these cards does bring me joy. Kano went over to him. Hey, what was all of that about? Apparently, Aokaro gave Hitomi some instructions. Told her to get into a blue minivan that was parked along Dolgenzaka. So Stanley's hunch had been correct. But why had Aokaro confessed so quickly? How'd you get him to talk? You don't need to know that. Turning on his heel, Stanley went to report the news about the blue van to the task force. Kuze immediately directed the detectives nearest Dogenzaka to look into it, but they found no blue minivan in, uh, in the area. The order came down for all personnel to search for the vehicle. Kano thought back to another item in the dick diary. Dick dicked up number 14. Use the dead as a stepping stone, but be sure to die a stepping stone yourself. Whoa. <laughs> that is stark. In the abstract, Kano could appreciate the nobility of self-sacrifice, but when he thought of Sasayama's bloodstained figure, he wasn't. it wasn't so easy to keep his emotions in check. First time you've ever seen a fellow officer get hurt? Stanley had come back over to him. We don't have time to relax. If you can't keep your anger in, then do something about it here and now. Stanley pointed to his own jaw. Hit me. American style. 
kind of smiled wryly at the unexpected American. Uh, propose unexpected proposal. Sorry, no thanks. I'll be fine. Hitting this man wasn't going to make Kano feel any better. I'm the one who deserves to get hit. Thinking about Sasayama, Kano couldn't help but feel guilty. Without a word, Kano threw a punch. We're not gonna, we're not going to be violent. No thanks. I'll be fine. Hitting this man wasn't going to make Kano feel any better. Stanley's expression remained unchanged. Remained unchanged. It's not like I don't understand why you wanted to punch that guy, he said quietly. If I didn't have to question him, I wouldn't have stopped you. How do we go from dick dictum like arresting baddies is good to dick dictum die a hero? <laughs> Seems like there's a dick dictum for everything, eh? Kano wasn't sure what to make of that. Are you encouraging me? Stanley held his arms wide. Don't know. Maybe. Kuzin's voice suddenly cut over in over the wireless. We've located a blue minivan. It's in Jinnan uh, Ichishome on Koendori. Hitomi might be there. Uh, and maybe the kidnappers as ringleader would turn up too. On a pure reflex, Kano broke into a run. Stanley followed close behind. They sped, the, they sped through the back streets, making their way to Koendori. Kano was pre a pretty fast runner, but Stanley kept up with him without apparent difficulty. Were you in the army or something? No, the marines. Yeah, Marines! <laughs> Life Iris, what is this, like, patriotism that's, like, coursing through you right now? I've never seen you this patriotic. It wasn't much further to Koendori. Kano, if we find that van, don't get too close, Stanley warned. It could be a trap. These people do anything to carry out their goals. Anything, huh? Kano could sense the truth of Stanley's words. He reminded himself that his life could depend on remembering. He, uh, he reminded himself that his life could depend on remembering them. He raised his eyes. They were coming up on Koen the wood. Suddenly, a boom as loud as cannon fire shook the area. Something's wrong, Kano thought. That's no city noise. A column of black smoke rose up from the, the uh, between two nearby buildings. Passersby, passersby stopped and stared, gasping in alarm. Well, we don't very often get animated or like you know sequences with motion in this game. It's usually screenshots, images. <laughs> Then Kano saw the flames. This hadn't been an accident. Someone had set off an explosion. Several people were on the ground nearby, evidently injured by the detonation. Mr. Minorikawa! Mr. Minorikawa! A high school age girl was crying, clinging tightly to a man who had been caught in the blast. Kano recognized her as the girl he talked to earlier during the traffic jam. The man looked like he might still be alive. Kano hurried over to them. ADK, Stanley's kind of cool. I hope he notices me and breaks my arm because I tried to resist. Simp. What? Uh, the man looked like he might still be alive. Kano heard over to them. Please, he announced. Blood was streaming from the man's mouth. He clearly suffered some internal damage. Hang in there, buddy! Kano told him, stay with us. The man's face twisted up in pain, but somehow he managed to croak out a few words. Kano let out a gasp. The man's voice was almost too weak to hear, but he, what he said still shook Kano to the core. This man knew something important. 
Something, something crucial to the investigation. What did he say? Rescue vehicles arrived on the scene and the wounded man was promptly loaded onto a stretcher. When he was placed inside the ambulance, Kuno flashed his badge at the paramedics and got in alongside him. The man had already fallen unconscious. Kuno didn't know when he'd wake back up, but he knew he needed to hear what the guy had to say. He senses this stranger that this stranger was the key to unlocking the entire case. But though Kano kept a lonely vigil, the man never woke again. The antiviral that had been given to Hitomi. The blue minivan all Kano wanted told Hitomi to look for. And now the minivan exploding. Kano was sure this man had known how all these tied together. But now the key to solving the case was gone for good. Huh. Lonely. Let's see. Connor tried to get information from a man who was caught in the explosion, Minorikawa, but he arrived too late. If Minorikawa hadn't been caught in the blast, things would have gone differently for Kano. At 13, at 1530, someone shouts something, and depending on what they shout, both Kano's and Minorikawa's fates may change. Someone shouts something at 1530. Let's see. I guess it's Achi, surely. Achi didn't slow his pace until they were nearing their destination. He turned to look back at Hitomi. It's only a little bit further now. Did you want to walk? I'll be alright. Ah! Achi, look out! Looking ahead, Achi saw there was they they were bearing down on this young grade school girl. So yeah, there's a hair. You guys ever get it? But like, I don't know, because since I have long hair and I shed a lot, like I feel a hair on the chair that's like hanging over the edge on my leg somewhere, but I can't get a hold of the hair. Because I'm wearing shorts right now, it's hot. Uh, uh, actually saw that they were bearing down on the young grade school girl. Her head hung in dismay. Hurriedly had caught the, hurriedly caught the girl up in his arms. Catch the girl. It's cute. Achi hurriedly- oh, that's the daughter. Achi hurriedly caught the girl up in his arms. The maneuver kept her out of harm's way, but the moment the momentum swung her high into the air, she dropped a sheaf of papers she was carrying. As luck would have it, the papers fell amidst the trash scattered alongside the road. Whoops, sorry! Achi stopped to gather up the sheets of paper. Nothing Noting that each was adorned with some sort of writing. Here, it looks like they kind of got messed up, though. The pages landed in some kind of spilled liquid. Most of them had gotten stained. It's alright, the girl said gloomily. You should just throw them away. It's not like I can sell them now anyways. You're gonna sell them? Let me ask. We're sorry, do you think you'll be able to redo them? Achi, is there a, Achi, is there a stationery store around here? Yeah, up at the top of Dogenzaka, Achi said. Here. He took a 5,000 note yen... He had a note from his wallet and offered it to the girl. To buy new paper. I know I can't replace the stuff you wrote, but the girl eyed the money doubtfully. But it's fine. Go ahead. Take it. Thank you very much. The little girl spoke with surprising formality. Then she turned and headed up the book. Achi gathered up the trash and tossed it into a garbage bin before he and he continued on their way. Oh, Hana, that's her name. They should make a visual novel game based on this stream. <laughs> Visual novel based on the stream, based on the game. A visual novel game. <laughs> Listen, I just wanna say, you know, that'd be a sick game. Because I'm in it. What? Uh, Achi looks to me to an old multi-tenant building. They hurried inside and headed up the stairs. Behind the reception window on the second floor sat the custodian sleeping on the job. Yukinori Ka uh, Kitajima. His main job is overseeing the monitoring room for the local surveillance cameras, but on the side, he also works as a novelist and game scenario writer. He often sleeps on his job during his free time, but sometimes while he's asleep, he gets his writing done. Just recently, a certain game was released set in Shibuya. But since he wrote the scenario and emailed it to the game company while he was asleep, he didn't know about it until just the other day. That's funny. Hey, wake up, man! 
Atsu gave the window a tap, and the man woke with a start. Huh? Uh, Achi, Achichi, don't scare me like that. That's one chi too many. And what, you seem to uh, sure have a lot of free time on your hands. Yeah, no one's been by to check today, but that's not so bad, right? I mean, I guess it is the surveillance room, but still. The man let out a big yawn. My dad asked me to come down here and check on security monitors, actually, Achi said. Sorry to bother you when you're busy, he told me at it with a polite bow. Huh? Who are you? You are Tachichi? I'm Hitomi Osawa. It's nice to meet you. Oh ho ho, what are you, Achichi's girlfriend? Again, too many chis there, and that's none of your business. Just let me have the key. Hoping his blush wasn't too obvious, Achi mimed unlocking a door. You won't answer a simple question? You want me to hand over the key? Yes, I'm his girlfriend, Hitomi said. We've just started dating, so I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you, sir. She flashed a winning smile. Oh, well, what a surprise. I never thought Achichi could land a fine lady like yourself. What the fuck is going on? The surprise custodian held out the key. Good for you, Achichi. Still one cheat too many there. But yeah, uh, dating. Achi gazed into Tomi's face, even more surprised than the custodian. The key dangled, swinging to and fro like a pendulum between Achi and the man behind the counter. Achi, Tomi said, nudging him in the side with her elbow. Come on. Oh, right. Snapping out of it, Achi took the key and headed up to the next floor. Hey, Pog! Let's fucking go! <laughs> I'm sorry, Kitomi said as they entered the monitoring room. For just saying we were dating like that, I mean. It was a pretty clumsy lie. No, no, it was just kind of sudden is all. I was just a bit jittery, I guess. Achi felt his cheeks color again. I mean, I figured I had to say something, or he wasn't going to cooperate, he told me, he told me said. He, she looked a little embarrassed herself. Aww. You, th uh, you think he told me he likes him? I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Obviously he likes her, but I'm just trying to gauge if you're right. she likes him back. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make things weird. No, 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 I just said, nah, it wasn't weird at all. Actually, it was kind of... He stopped himself there. That wasn't the time for that sort of conversation. They needed to find that blue minivan. The surveillance camera monitoring room was really just a big office with a single computer. Achi knew it well. So this is the monitoring system, he said. He switched on the computer. Can see all of downtown Shibuya from this one computer. Hitomi gazed impatiently at the monitor even though it wasn't showing anything yet. The look of sheer determination on her face held Achi enthralled. You talk about how attractive your sister is, Achi murmured. But as far as I'm concerned, right now you're the lovely one, Hitomi. Aww. Hitomi looked at him uncertain. I mean, you look look at the lengths you're going to and the risks and the risks you're taking to save your sister, Achi said. I can't bear the thought that something might happen to her. The last time we were together, I said such horrible things. Plenty of people do bad things without even realizing they're bad. Never mind trying to fix it. I'm just doing what I think is right. Yeah, but these days most people don't do the right thing. Heck, if they did, Shibuya wouldn't be covered in trash like it is. Me, I appreciate when someone really cares about things that are important. Doing the right thing as a matter of course. That's very attractive. Achi blushed as he said it, and Hitomi shyly looked away. Music cracks me up. I think the system is ready. Turning on the computer, Achi hastily changed the subject. Smooth, brother. This thing's so simple, even I know how to use it. Clicking on the mouse, he brought up a row of four windows, windows on the monitor. 
got it! Oh, I got the son of a bitch! Finally, the fruit fly was on the wall. Like, just... I don't know if you guys could hear it, but I just like, very aggressively slapped the wall. Sorry they didn't stay here long, but I have to get going. Have fun the rest of the stream. This game seems interesting. No problem! Thank you for stopping by those Facebook, and I wish you the best of luck. My ne next stream is going to be Saturday, so hopefully by then uh, you will have heard back, and you will be around to share us what I know is going to be the good news. I don't know why I said it like that, but thanks again for coming by, and have a good rest of your night. I believe in you. Best of luck with uh, the edition results. Each window showed a different view of the Shibuya sco Scootyscape Cityscape. The image quality is not great, but that's what's be that's because it's being updated on a two second delay, I guess. I actually tapped on the keyboard bringing up a shots of different locations. Fruit fly, more like fruit bly, bly, fruit by, got him. He clicked on one of them in order to enlarge the image. Maybe we really can find that minivan with this. That makes sense, you know, then Achi and Hitomi are going to be able to, once they find the van, they're going to be able to be like, BOMB! Maybe we can really find that minivan with this, Hitomi is practically glued to the screen. My dad's the one who designed the security system. Your dad must be pretty amazing. Well, he graduated top of his class at Tokyo Denko University. He always said he could have had a career in computer engineering, but he took over the electronic shop that he could so that he could marry my mother instead. Aww. That's such a sweet story. Did they run the store together then? Achi shook his head. No. My mother died when I was four. Oh, I'm, s I'm sorry. He told me he sounded even sadder than Achi. Well, anyway, never mind that. Exe. The sea-looking weirdo they'd run into, uh, Giggle, was on the screen. Huh? That guy again. Said weirdo was running all out. Lapped a computer under one arm. He was being chased by a man in a long coat. That guy sure gets chased around a lot, huh? When the weirdo slipped out of view, Achi switched to another camera. There, there again. Then the new view showed the weirdo running again. But hopping from camera to camera, they could track him wherever he went. As long as we have these cameras, Achi said, this guy has nowhere to run. Hmm. Nowhere to run, huh? The moment they said the moment he said those words, they struck an odd chord in his mind. He remembered their repeated run ins with the man with the cane, how the assassin had always seemed to know where to find them. Achi, please, he told me I urge, stop messing around and look for the mess minivan. Sorry, there's just something I'm curious about. Achi continued to track the seedy looking man. Alright, my bad. Achi switched over to a different camera. Oh, is he suspicious that, like, there's. that, like, Yanagista's a bad guy or something? Well, we know he's not, so is this the right option for us? I'm curious to see where this leads, so I'm gonna pick it. Sorry, there's just something I'm curious about. Achi continued to track the seedy looking man. The weirdo rushed into a knick-knack shop on Center Guy. Soon after, the man with the coat appeared and followed him into the shop. Aha! Looks like he snatched that guy's computer. Moments later, the weirdo came rushing back out of the shop and sprinted away again. He wove through the narrow alleyways with- Are they gonna f see Maria? Achi did his best to keep his tabs on him, but the man managed to give him the slip. Oh, f damn it! Wow, he thought he said. She too had been watching closely. Kind of impressed. Mind if I keep at it? Achi asked. Sure. He continued scanning camera images, trying to locate this guy again. At this point, even Hitomi was invested in the quest to find the fugitive. Computer engineer? What a dork. I know, right? Only nerds do computer, computer engineering and programming shit. Um, but minutes passed, and they didn't stop him. Achi was on the verge of giving up. Oh, that's me. Hitomi took out her cell phone. It's an email from Mr. Tan. Found him! Achi sh shout cut Hitomi off. <gasps> the guy was in the. I knew it! The guy was in the back alley of Center Guy. He was talking with someone. 
Huh? Is that... Achi blinked a few times as he leaned closer to the screen. You told me you have to come look at this. That's... That's my sister. He told me brim with excitement. For real? I think so. What's she doing in a place like that? And why is she talking to that guy? I'm not sure. A monitor showed a cheerful little scene. Looks like they're having fun. Guess since they're twins, they're both into older guys. Achi felt his mood start as our bra. I have to ask you, are you sure she was kidnapped? Yes, at least I thought so, and so did the police. Then what's this all about? Should we go and see for ourselves? Guess so, and what about that email? Achi pone Hitomi's cell phone. Shouldn't you take a look at that? My sister comes first. The place where she is, is it far from here? No, not particularly. Achi and Hitomi rush from the building, heading for the alleyway, alleyway, alleyway where Maria was ta uh, talking to the computer thief. Okay, this will, this will, this will break Maria's breakout. Or, keep out, sorry. Spicy. Suddenly I hear someone call out, Maria! Huh? I spin around to see a young girl running toward me. She, she kind of looks like me. Behind her are two men. One of them is the man with the cane. He raises his gun and aims it at her. Oh no, he's going to shoot her. The instant I realize what he's doing, I'm lunging towards him. He shifts his grip. He shifts his grip on the gun and clubs me in the head. I stagger against the wall, trying to keep my feet, but my legs buckle under me and I crumple on the spot. I don't even know why I tried to protect this girl. My body just moved on its own. Maybe it was just reflexive impulse to help someone in danger. But am I the sort of person who risks her life to protect some complete stranger? Is that a bad end? Dang, so we're, I mean, obviously we're not supposed to let them get back together, so. Obviously we're supposed to not find them. Sag. Alright, my bad. Nachi switched over to a different camera. He continued switching views, scanning the streets of Shibuya, but there was no sign of a blue minivan anywhere. Still, they remained glued to the monitor. Oh, that's me. Hitomi took out her cell phone. It's an email from Mr. Tanaka. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was about time for my mood to take a dip, Achi thought. What? Hitomi blurted. She looked up from her phone. Achi, Mr. Tanaka found the minivan. He what? What does he say? Read it to me. Okay. I ran after it, but wound up losing sight of it. It was heading towards Dinan. That's what he says. What about your sister? Was she inside? He doesn't say. Achi switched over to an array of surveillance cameras near Dinan. A few seconds as the transition took felt... Uh, felt agonizingly slow. Finally, four new images popped up. Achi quickly enlarged one of them. Ah! He told me about a tiny gasp. There on the monitor was the blue minivan. There was no doubt about it. Achi, he told me, rushed from the building towards Jinan in an all out run. Run! Achi Hitomi, other guy who's looking for me too. Oh. Neither spoke, they just simply dashed along in silence. Achi felt as if they'd been running a, ma a marathon and finally had a finally. And the finish line had finally come into view. Okay, let's. This is Minoni College Jump. Let's do this. It's better to take the jumps as I can rather than. Um, forget and then get stuck, right? Because we got stuck for a while because I missed one jump spot by mistake. Um, running along Kondori in pursuit of Miku, Minoriko heard a cell phone ringtone coming from somewhere nearby. Uh, 
Oh. Suddenly, a massive fiery blast knocked him from his feet. A deafening roar set his head throbbing. What was that? What's going on? He lay in a daze on the ground, trying to wrap his mind around what he just what had just happened. He smelled the foul scent of burning rubber. Then the sound then came the sound of quick footsteps rushing up to him. Mr. Minorikawa, a voice called out to him as if across an impossible distance. Mr. Minorikawa. Is that Miku? He forced his eyes open and saw Miku anxiously looking down at him. Minorikawa san Miku, those things I said earlier, I'm I'm sorry. I went too far. What are you talking about? That's not important right now. Miku choked back a gasp when Minorikawa realized he had blood leaking from his mouth. His body wouldn't move and his mind was reeling. What? What happened? Tell me. Miku's voice was dry and hoarse. There was a minivan. It, it exploded. Exploded? A minivan exploded on a city street? That sounded like a terrorist act. His mind reeling drifted back to the attempted bioterrorist attack on K uh, Kusumi Gaseki? Ah, Kusumi Gaseki, two years earlier. An un unoccupied minivan had exploded outside an MPD station, and afterward, a device meant to scatter a dangerous biological agent had been discovered near the subway. With sudden clarity, Minorikawa really recalled what Osawa had said earlier. Fuck, he dead. He ditch. The power balance of the entire world might be at stake here. Could there be some sort of connection between Osawa's warning and this explosion? There was. There had to be. Miyorikawa's journalistic intuition told him it must be true. Something terrible was underway here in Shibuya. Please, a man in a suit announced. He crouched behind Miyorikawa and gently lifted his head and torso. Hang in there, buddy. Stay with us. The change of position allowed Miyorikawa to clear his airway, and he sucked in a deep breath. But as he did, the in an intense pain shocked through his lungs. I think I might be done for. Whatever his intuition might be telling him, it didn't look like he'd ever be able to write about it. But if he couldn't get his pay his words onto the page, at least he could do was tell someone else. With his last act, maybe he could still accomplish something. He strained to get a few words out. So, uh, Kenji Osawa. The power balance of the entire world. As his voice failed, he heard the sound of an ambulance of ambulance sirens, sirens approaching. Paramedics began frantically unloading stretchers. Turning his head, he saw a number of other people who had been injured in the explosion laid out on the roadside. Amongst them were a woman and a child. Emergency workers bearing the stretcher came over to Minorikawa. Forget about me. I'm beyond helping. Save the others instead. Minorikawa shouted, shouted inwardly, but no one heard. So that's still a bad end. Well, I mean, but Cunnel in- but we did shout it, and we- that's why we made the jump, no? I guess let's try and not make the jump, then. Neither spoke this- okay. Achi felt as if they'd been running a marathon, and the finish line had finally come into view. They hooked a left at the station and darted past the Seibu department store. Ha! Ati pointed as he came to a stop. The blue minivan was still there, parked by the curb along a slight hilly incline. Leaving Ati behind, Hikumi started rushing up the hill. Alarm bells started going off in Ati's mind. Someone from the kidnapping crew was in that van. It was dangerous to approach carelessly. Stay back, don't get too close. Stay back, don't get too close! Ati shouted. But she didn't appear to hear his cries. The hope of rescuing her sister had driven all else from her mind. Achi started to run after her. He told me he had reached a vehicle already. She brought her face close to one of its windows, but the tinted glass obscured the view inside. He told me he circled around the minivan on the other side. Achi saw her grasping at the door. She slipped out of view for just a moment. Yo, everyone's ending up dead. <laughs> there was a thunderous explosion and a gout of flame where to that tore, through, tore off the roof of the minivan like it was made of aluminum foil. 
he Hitomi. Horrified, Achi charged through roiling smoke, searching for Hitomi. He saw two figures sprawled on the on the street, several meters from the van. Hitomi and Kanan. Hitomi, wake up! Achi cradled her in his arms, and her eyes drifted open faintly. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Hitomi didn't appear to understand him. Her only response was a dazed, blank look. There was a small patch of red on her face. Achi wiped it away gently with a finger. He saw no further signs of bleeding. She must have been splattered by someone else's blood then. As far as he could tell, she hadn't been gravely injured. Achi let out a sigh of relief. Hitomi, is she alright? Kanan stirred on the ground. Her clothes were scorched in places and she was bleeding from her head. Kanan, did you save her? Is she alright? Da damn, she dead to double kill. <laughs> JK, Shen, all. Oh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> TK, old. <ult>. Eat. <laughs> and what about her sister? Kanan didn't respond. But it can't be. Atsu went to look inside the van. Mrs. the smoke with flames, he could make out an outline of a body. What happened here? Achi had to look away. Get Hitomi out of here. Hurry. If those guys show back up, Kanan's face twisted up with pain. Alright. Achi settled Hitomi carefully in his arms. Wait, I need to tell you something. Kanan's pain's pained gasp called him back. Alfred. What a f what a name, Alfred. Huh? Alfred. That's the name of the mastermind. I'm sure it'll come up again if you keep pursuing this. But if you value your life, don't get involved with Alfred any further. Now go. Okay, and thanks. With Hitomi in his arms, Achi hurried from the scene. He wasn't sure where he was heading. He just wanted to get away. Oops. He carried her past the crowd of onlookers and swiftly begun to assemble. The flames of the burning van e rose ever higher, roaring up towards the heavens. I feel like that's the end of this chapter for Achi, probably. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a place to end the chapter. Huh. So, how was... Maybe, maybe now Minori Kaba will hear them saying, like, don't approach the van. No, we still get a bad ending for him. Huh. How come we don't show Achi all the way to the end? That's really strange that her timeline doesn't show correctly. I'm just gonna skip through this last part again one more time real quick. Yeah, why is it not showing to the to be continued, interestingly enough? Uh... Phew, suddenly I felt feel totally exhausted. I let out a sigh and dropped my eyes, and that's when I noticed a small notebook at my feet. What am I supposed to do? I hang my head at a total loss. The necklace around my neck sways idly to and fro. Oh wait, um... There's this 
jump spot, right? I forgot about it. <laughs> Freshness burger. <laughs> that food is good. Eventually I muster up the energy to start walking around town, heading nowhere in particular. The billboard outside of the department store to place a poster of some female musician. She must be pretty popular because lots of passerby to stop to take a good look. Am I just imagining things? I feel like I saw this same poster somewhere very recently. Standing underneath the sign is a woman talking on the cell phone. She sounds like she's having an argument with whoever's on the line. I don't want to be nosy, so I just pass on by. As I come out onto Koendori, I gradually, gradually come to a halt. I'm a little tired from all this aimless wandering around. I let my gaze stray along the street as I consider my next move. Then I catch sight of a blue minivan parked across the street. Oh, suddenly my heart starts pounding. I know this. I know this minivan. If I head over to her, sure I'll remember something. As if pulled by some huge magnet, I make my word towards the vehicle. There's a sudden thunderous boom. I'm knocked flat back. I'm knocked flat by a blast of energy, and the world goes topsy turvy. As I lie in shock, a wave of unfamiliar images fills my mind. cloud of whirling dust in some place that isn't Japan. A simple room with unfamiliar architecture. A girl. And I know the girl's name. Her name is... Kanan. On the verge on the verge of that revelation my consciousness fades away. <sighs> Dude, Maria arrived on Kondori just in time to get him caught. She's going to avoid this fate. She needs to stay away from that vehicle. Someone else's actions can ensure that Hanatoyama crosses paths with her again. Then Maria will talk to her and avoid the minivan. Looking at it, she saw that there was- okay. Oh, oops, I skipped the choice by accident. Boss is so hard, life flashes before her eyes. I know, right? She got bopped. Ati took a quick leap to one side. He managed to avoid crashing her into her by taking tumble himself, but the girl was still definitely a bit shocked. Sorry about that, Ati said. But the girl didn't answer even meet Ati's eyes. She doesn't look around as if in a face. She's waiting on someone, maybe? Odd kid, Ati thought. I hope she's okay. Once more, Ati and Kakumi set off running. Just skip through this because we've already read this. I catch sight of a little. I catch sight of little Hana in front of the billboard. I was yeah. I was thinking like it's really bizarre that they're bringing up this lady in an argument on the phone. She's showing something to a woman there. Some colorful sheets of paper. Hmm. The woman looks a lot like the musician in the poster. Moreover, I have a feeling I've seen her someplace before. Where could I have seen her? 
Man, having amnesia is really a pain in the ass. I have no way of knowing whether I've forgotten something or had no memory of it in the first place. The woman looks through the papers Hannah held out to her, nodding approvingly at each one, and I can hear her murmur with an admiration. Hannah. I wave as I scamper over to her. As I do, the woman abruptly hurries off. Hey, we meet again, I say. Hannah just gives me a bored look. Who was that just now, I ask? I don't know. Hannah quickly gathers up her belongings and start starts walking briskly away. Hey, wait up, I call out. The girl ignores me. She moves at a moves she's moving at a jog now. At a she's moving at a jog now, heading from Spanish Hill towards Coin Bruh. Ah! As she steps out onto Coin she trips and falls down hard. She the contents of her bag spill out on the road. Whoops! Catching up to her, I gather up some of the fallen pages. What's this? There are poems written on the colored paper. Bless so hard, or Hana. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, that the woman on the phone looked like Aya Kamiki, but I was like, from the poster, right? But I was like, whatever. Don't touch those. Those are for sale. For sale? I'm selling poems that I wrote. Wow, that's incredible. She looks surprised by the compliment. Incredible. My friends in school said they were dumb. That's not true. I only saw a little just now, but I thought it was a really good poem. You're just saying that. I've been out here in Shibuya for weeks trying to sell these, but the only person who bought one now was that lady. Just the only person who's bought one was that lady just now. Hannah let out a mournful sigh. Well, what are you here selling poems for anyway? I thought maybe it'd help pay back our debts. Huh? Okay, that's not something I'd expect from a little kid. My dad's in real deep, she continues. The topic makes me think of Mr. Yamagishi. Guess today's my day for meeting people mired in debt. And I'm only in elementary school, so I can't get a part-time job. I'm impressed. She's so brave. She's maybe a little hard to approach, but she is just a kid after all. She's so brave, I just want to give her a hug. Oh, Hana! I hear a strange wailing from behind. Startled, I turn around to see Mr. Toyama standing and there, tears streaming from his eyes. Hana, I'm so sorry. I had no idea you were trying so hard to... Toyama rushes up to the girl. It's quite the emotional father-daughter reunion. <laughs> or at least that's how it looks until Hana slaps her face across. Slaps the face with her slaps her father across the face with the bundle of papers what was that for don't give me that i'm sick of all this running around bruh she delivers several more well-placed smacks with her little craft project okay 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 toyama says at last i know you're upset but i have to ask you for just one thing yeah you tell her or you tell him you tell him uh hana but I have to ask you for just one thing. Then we can see you about getting through the day, okay? Okay, but just one. I can't help but find this ordinary interaction charming. You two get along really well, don't you? I say. Yep. Nope. The two give simultaneous, con simultaneous contradictory replies. Then Hana sullenly starts to walk off with Toyama running after her, or tottering after her. It's such a weird little sight that I can't help but laugh. I come across a car on the roadside that's spectacularly aflame. A group of onlookers surrounds it in a confused uproar. It seems almost unreal, like I'm looking at some a set for a TV show or something. I stand there staring into the flames. Huh? What's that? I can see something.
The raging heat makes the air shimmer. The scent of dry sand fills my nose. A gust of wind sear a gust of searing wind tugs at my hair. Where where am I? Everyone getting a live action scene the fuck? It's really cool. I'm really enjoying the animation like actually having like a live action uh you know, film, not just uh images. Decaying roads, decaying houses. A decaying city. And the people who live there. People who live, people who live, people who live. There's someone by my side. Someone who's with me watching all of this. It's a girl. The person with me is a girl slightly younger than me. She says something to me. Anais me. Cat's Cradle. That's my voice now. Cat's Cradle? Whose voice was that? What's going on? Who am I talking to? Yeah, Cat's Cradle. I'm showing someone how to do a Cat's Cradle. But who? Who am I showing how to do a cat's cradle? Kanan. The word Kanan echoes in my head. Anna. She's Anna. Anna is me. Kanan. I utter the name aloud. The images floating through my mind are beginning to break up and vanish. But I feel like for a brief moment of these, I caught hold of the edges of my lost memories. That's right. Come on. As soon as I say it, I'm filled with a powerful sense of duty. I'm responsible for something, something I need to do. If I don't, this Kanan person is going to be in grave danger. Calm down, just calm down. I'm pleading with myself now, fighting the impulse to take off running. If I did, where would I go? I have no idea what my destination or goal even is. Please, please remember something. Please. I gaze out the flames, practically praying now. Don't move. A voice hisses in my ear, and I feel something hard pressed against my back. I don't need to turn around to recognize whose voice it is. Thought you said you didn't have any business with me. I did a little thinking, says the man with the cane slowly. About how I might lure out Hitomi Osawa, see? I'm going to use you as bait. Spicy. All right. So we officially do indeed have two to be continued, but I'm a little tired for today. Oh, I really want to go to bed very early tonight. I woke up this morning with the most horrific headache. Oh my god. When I also went to sleep with a headache, so. And there's no fish emote. Yeah, there is. There should be. No. Fish. Why are we talking about fish? I like fish. Cause bait. Oh, true. 
Say something nice about yourself. Say something nice that happened today. I did my laundry, so I have lots of clean clothes now. It just doesn't show up in mobile. The fuck? <laughs> Get fucked. Mobile diff. Anyways, I need to use the bathroom. Oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna crawl into bed. Whew. Anyways, that is it for today. Should be a scramble stream. Um, we're getting pretty close to the end of hour four, so that's cool. Uh, we'll definitely finish hour four. Probably start hour five next. Um, like the the th we're almost done with the three to four hour. We're probably gonna start to four to the four to five hour next time on Shibuya Scramble. So, anyways, but the next stream is gonna be on Saturday. We'll be back with Kingdom Hearts. There's a good chance we're gonna... There's a good chance it will be the second to last Kingdom Hearts stream, honestly. Because uh, we're actually super close to the end. We're, we're literally in the final boss rush, so... But I do want to go grind a little bit, probably, so... I'm probably not going to actually finish it this Saturday. Maybe next. But anyways, thanks for coming by, everyone. Uh, yeah. Next stream, like I said, is going to be on Saturday, so... You all have a good rest of your days, and have a good rest of your weeks. And I'll see you on Saturday. Bye!